What is goody peasants? My name is JB and I'm here today with my week 4 game in the PCL. This week we are taking on our good friend Austin aka Godchomp the God, commissioner of the PCL and the coach of the Lawrence Talon Flames, who currently has a record of 2-1 with a plus 2 differential. Uh, you can go check out the team builder uh, in the description down below yesterday's video uh, if you want to you know, see uh, what our team is designed to do and what the sets are meant to do and how this team works. And uh, yeah, just a little bit more about that. So, a couple things I want to get to before this game starts. One, yeah, I know I did a live comp or a post comp two weeks ago, and that was a pretty you know more so for from like a controversial standpoint, a thing that you know just sort of had to be done. This week, um, really, I, I was editing this video. I, I live comped it, and I was editing it, and honestly, I was just genuinely embarrassed by how bad the commentary was. Like. Watching it back, I was just like, I, I, every other word out of my mouth was an f bomb. Like it, it was just really bad, and I, I just felt like I couldn't upload it, but I did. Uh, I did go ahead and upload it. You can see also in the description, uh, there's a link to the live com version of this game, which is unedited. Uh, and it's just it's unlisted as well. So if you want to see the live com, uh, feel free. But like, bear in mind, it is the commentary is just god awful. It's it's pathetic. Like. It's real, it's real, real bad, although there is some funny moments in it, so I, <laughs> I wouldn't advise you watch it around any children, but uh, that is what it is, so. If you want to, you know, see some funny stuff, there were a few funny things that did happen in the live comp, so go check that out if you want to see it. Uh, it's, again, there's a link to it in the description, it's an unlisted video, so yeah, go check that out if you want to. Anyway, uh, getting into, also, wait, before I do that, I always do this to myself. Uh, if you do go watch the uh, live comp version, don't take anything I say seriously. Austin is one of my favorite people in the world. That's just our friendship. We shit talk each other constantly. That's just what we do. So don't take anything I say on it seriously. Uh, now, getting back to the uh, post comp, which is the game that uh, you most of you will probably uh, actually end up seeing. Uh, you can see that uh, he ended up bringing a team of Celesteela, Aerodactyl, Necrozma, Primarina, Zygarde, and Buzzwell. So pretty much uh, the worst that I feared, he brought the Primarina. Which honestly just destroys my team. And yeah, it's pretty, it's just a really rough matchup. And like I said, I know one of the two between Celesteela and Necrozma is probably going to be an Autotomize set. Potentially weakness policy as well. Uh, Zygarde... Uh, it could be any number of things, but most likely probably just a uh, DD subset or a sub coil or a DD coil set, something along those lines. I uh, would like the coverage moves, and as long as it doesn't have crunch, uh, Decidueye can put in work against it defensively. Buzzwell, a bit of a surprise, honestly, but I understand why he brought it as it's a very good check to Landers Therian, which you can see, of course, I did not bring, and I go over why I didn't bring it in the team builder. Another quick little plug for the team builder. Uh, so yeah, good to see Buzzwell doing some things, probably a more like bulkier variant, like a max HP variant. I don't think he'd pretend bring a scarf variant, but he could. And then Primarina just destroys things, uh, literally just kills everything on my team. And then we have Aerodactyl, which is his only stealth walker, as well as his only removal that he brought. So going in, uh, my plan was originally to leave with Slurpuff. Like that was always the plan going in was to leave with Slurpuff. And I did decide to leave with Slurpuff as I didn't see... Galventula or Zoroark. So the only way I didn't see it was if I saw neither Aerodactyl or Galvantula and I did see Zoroark. That was the only scenario where I never led Slurpuff. However, I do see Aerodactyl, so I do decide to go ahead and lead Slurpuff. We do have the magic coat to bounce back rocks. That is our rock setter this week. It's him uh, deciding to set rocks with either Aerodactyl or Necrozma in this case. So I did decide to lead off with Slurpuff. As you can see, uh, Austin leads off with Celesteela, and honestly, this is perfect. This is a fantastic scenario because we are a Sash Endeavor set with Sticky Web and Flamethrower, as well as Magic Coat. So I just decided to go ahead and get my webs up. Uh, as as you can see, we are faster, which is huge for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it will allow us to outspeed uh, if he decided to go for the Autonomize that turn. If once he attacked us, basically uh, we would still outspeed and we'd be able to. Get off an Endeavor, bringing something down to 1 HP, and as you can see, we are actually able to Endeavor the Celesteela, getting that thing down to 1 HP on turn 2, which is absolutely phenomenal. Sort of getting up webs, Endeavoring the piss out of that Celesteela, 
set work to perfection. Shout out to Spice Shed for that idea. So he is going to get the attack boost. So we can just bring in Zero Aura for free. Uh, it has the most coverage for his team, so I just decided uh, that it was, like, I guess the safest bet to go ahead and pick this thing off. That's really good side to go for HPIs in case you wanted to randomly save it. Uh, predicting, uh, or just bringing in Zygarde for whatever reason, so we'd at least get damage off on it. But we do just, so we do just go for the HPIs picking off Celesteela. And he is allowed to bring in the Zygarde. So, me being the crazy, uh, SOB that I am, I definitely predict Austin to, uh, click some sort of setup move. Uh, instead of attacking me, predicting me to switch. So I just decided to go for HPI, getting enough humongous damage on the Zygarde. So he goes for a sub, leaving the Zygarde at 1 HP. But this is a Power Construct Zygarde. This is Zygarde 100%. So I kind of just gave him Zygarde 100 behind a sub for free. But, I mean, hey, that's a lot of damage on Zygarde, right? That was a good play. <laughs> but... <laughs> It is actually, you know, pretty solid damage, so I will take that. And I can get, uh, just switch their aura out and bring in my Decidueye, which is designed to keep this thing in check. Uh, we have Haze on this set, as well as a uh, near max HP, just to take hits like that thousand arrows, like they were absolutely nothing. And now here I could just fire off a Leaf Blade to... I'll break the sub, it was actually a roll to break the sub, and thankfully we do manage to get the roll. As he, I believe, just clicks Coil this turn, which is honestly, you know, freaking terrifying. But we do see that we are faster as well, which is very effing nice indeed. So we can see that uh, we were worried about him running his speed tier that he would run on Zygarde, and he ended up running very little speed at all. Because we didn't, we don't have much speed on this, uh, this Sigiwai either. But we can go for a, I decided to go for Leaf Blade there as opposed to... Um, Haze to get rid of his boost, so to get him underneath like 25% so he couldn't sub again. As he does reveal the crunch, so either way I was dead that turn. I feel like I made the better play, uh, preventing him from being able to sub again later. And I can just get him as uh, Lele here, as um, he has no switch-ins to a Moonblast really, because Celesteel is already down, so that's very nice. He is going to switch out the Zygarde, uh, keeping it alive at 1 HP, which is a little bit uh, strange now that I've seen this whole moveset. We've seen sub, coil, arrows, and crunch, so he's going to bring in the Primarina. And my worst fears have come true. As you can see, this Moonblast does absolutely nothing. And, and all but confirming that it is, in fact, an Assault Vest Primarina. So I am a force to switch out. My Zero Aura can actually eat a hit and uh, revenge kill this thing. So he is going to go for the Moonblast, which does just a piss load to my Zero Aura. Poor guy. Also, it didn't have a nickname. For some reason, my Zero Aura didn't have his nickname, so can we get an F in the comment section for Dorian not having his nickname on his uh, bond? But I can just click... Um, I decided to click Plasma Fist here on the off chance he wanted to stay in with Primarina for some reason. I didn't feel like just sacking my Zero Aura. I felt like I had to just... Like, I didn't want to overpredict in case he decided to stay in, but I can just pick off the Zygarde with that Hidden Power Eye, so he does sack the Zygarde there. Uh, which, you know, is fine, but the Primarina is still around, and my only two real answers to it are, well, the Decidueye's dead, and now Zero Aura is at 25 HP, and those are really my only legitimate answers to be able to actually kill Primarina. So here I don't want to sack off my only way of killing Primarina, so I bring in Tapu Lele on the Buzzwool. The only way that he can actually kill me is with Banded Poison Jab, and he goes for the Leech Life, and you can see this is going to do an absolute ton of damage, but I do live, which is all I needed to do. Uh, I'm Scarf, so I'm faster than everything he has left, and I can, it's, uh, outside of a potential Scarf Aerodactyl, that is. And I can just fire off a Moonblast, so he does just go back into the Premier which is nice. I'm getting chip damage off on it, which is all I can really ask for at this point, is just <laughs> enough damage that I can keep it in range and potentially just pick it off with something else later. So that Moonblast brings it below half, so I calc, and I'm like, okay, he's in range of Gyarados if I go for one more. So I can suck off Lele, put this thing in range of Gyarados, and uh, just let... I'm on top of Lele go down. I did calc to see uh, if my Gyarados could live a Moonblast, and it turns out it can, even after Mega, even, you know, Moonblast is super effective. Uh, max Special Attack Modest Moonblast does 95 max, so... I decided to be a little bit ballsy here and actually go for a Dragon Dance and potentially set myself up to just win the game with Gyarados. So as you can see, let's go for the uh, nice old Mega Evolution, pop the Dragon Dance off, and uh, you will see how much this... Uh, Moonblast ends up doing is quite honestly disgusting. So yeah, get the DD off, which is fantastic. Uh, sets me up to just sweep the rest of his team, barring uh, potential sashes or resist berries and whatnot. So 
Moonblast comes off, brings me down to 13 HP. Jesus, that did so much. But uh, it never killed, so like I said, we, we're safe barring a crit to go for that play. He doesn't have priority left, so we can actually get rid of the Primarina there. And we have a plus one Gyarados. He brings out the Necrozma, so I know something's up at this point. Uh, I have Mold Breaker, so Prism Armor is not affected by... You know, it doesn't, he doesn't have the effects of Prism Armor. So I go for the plus one Crunch, which should kill... Unless he's Culver Berry Necrozma. Good bring. And... Yeah, that doesn't do really anything. Still does a solid amount, like, it still does like half to a Necrozma, which is absurd. And you can see he gets off a freaking Trick Room! Austin bringing a Resist Berry and Trick Room on the same Mon. Uh, he said after the battle, he, the reason he brought it was because I would never expect it, and he was right. Very good bring on uh, my opponent's part. And down was my Mega Gyarados, unfortunately. But I can just bring in Specs Kyrim at this point. Um, it's all I have left with Zero Aura. Like, Zero Aura is at like 25 HP, so I have to go Kyrim here pretty much. The only thing he can kill me with is like a Expert Belt boosted Photon Geyser, but he's not Expert Belt. We still have the Culverberry. So he goes for the. Or I said. Um, I meant Photon. I said Photon Geyser, but I meant Stone Edge. You can see the Photon Geyser does around half, but I can get off a of Specs Ice Beam, dropping the Necrozma. So at this point, I just have to hope that uh, he chokes and doesn't click Fighting Stab with uh, Buzzwell or he clicks some sort of inaccurate move and misses like Hammer Arm for some freaking reason. As you can see, he actually goes for the Leech Life. And Kiram lives the Leech Life on 18 HP, gets off an Ice Beam, and one-shots the Buzzwell. Specs Kiram putting in the finest of work for the squad and we still have one turn of his Trick Room left, which means that we will underspeed this Aerodactyl. And unless he's Focus Sash, Hiram's gonna clean up back to back games in back to back weeks. Hiram, in two games with the squad, has gotten seven kills and cleaned up two games. So, shout out to Kiram for being the absolute MVP. Bringing this game back from the brink of a loss, and honestly, Austin played incredibly well this game. His uh, sets worked, his tech worked fine. It's just, unfortunately, the Trick Room was still up at that point. Uh, but it, I'm honestly not too sure if it had mattered, because it turns out he wasn't Scarf. Um, Aerodactyl, he would have had to hit a Stone Edge versus my Kyurem to kill me. Well, no, he could have killed me with anything. I don't know what I'm thinking, but yeah, he would have had to... Uh, kill my Kyurem there, but unfortunately for him, like, he still had a turn of Trick Room left, and he dropped the Ice Beam, but even if Trick Room was enough, he still could have, he would have had to kill my Kyurem, and then Zero Aura would have outsped and just finish it off with Plasma Fist, so, either way, uh, I actually, you know, had the game one, uh, once Buzzwell died, and yeah, that was just huge. It turns out he did have Fighting Stab on his Buzzwell, for, for those of you wondering why he didn't just click Superpower there, he didn't have it, so... Bit unfortunate that he uh, ended up not having the uh, way to actually kill my Kyurem, but, well, unfortunate for him, very fortunate for us that he didn't have it, so for those of you who were just questioning why he wouldn't click it, he didn't have it, and Buzz er, Specs Kyurem just dropped the Buzzle with Ice Beam, and from there we just cleaned up with uh, either one of our mons, honestly, so turns out we just, uh, just unfortunate timing on his behalf, and very fortunate for us, so game easily could have gone either way but we take those and we are now sitting a nice and pretty three and one plus six differential which honestly is one of the highest differentials i've ever had you guys know i'm not usually one to play for differential but you know in the pokemon community i've learned that you have to play for differential whether you want to or not no matter whether or not you think it actually matters because in my opinion differential shouldn't mean a damn thing compared to the head-to-head -head game but People in this community are terrified of change and just, for whatever reason, don't think that makes sense even though, like, the head-to-head -head game clearly should matter more than what you do against someone else. Like, why should... whatever. We're not... that's a different topic for a different video, but... Yeah, we actually have a solid differential right now, which is great. Um, so, with that being said, uh, we do take on Tone, coach of the Miami Malamarlins, who is currently undefeated. Uh, as of me recording this battle, I don't know how his Week 4 game turned out, but he's currently 3-0. So we might have to take on an undefeated coach going into Week 5. Either way, he's going to, at worst, be tied with us in record. So should be a fun game next week. And thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Be sure to go uh, check out Austin in the description down below, as well as all, the, all of the other coaches. Go check everyone out. 
go watch all their videos. Have fun binge watching PCL games today. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling. Thanks for watching. Peace.